Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and today I will teach you how to make this exact simulation in Blender using the new simulation system Mantaflow. As always, it's going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so press X to delete the uh, default cube, and then go to Add, Mesh, and then let's add a uh, UV sphere. And then we can add some uh, particles to the UV sphere for the explosion. So click on the uh, plus sign to add a particle system. And we will set the number of particles to 3000. And we only need the sphere to emit particles for uh, one frame. So let's set the frame start to one and then the end to two. And then the lifetime to seven so that they last for seven frames. And then the velocity is the emission speed. So I'll set that to uh, 25 meters per second which is a lot. And then I will also add some randomness and set the randomness value to 100. Okay, and as you can see, we have the uh, particle explosion. There are a lot of values that you can play around with. For example, you can go into the physics values and uh, change the uh, Brownian value and see what it looks like. But I'm just going to set it back to zero. And then next, we can uh, go into the render settings and the viewport display. And uh, let's change the size of the particles. Let's go to one of the earlier frames. And then I'll set the size to 0 0.03. And then I'm also going to hide the emitter in the render like this, but we do not need to hide the emitter in the viewport. So uh, let's just keep it this way. And then next we need to add the uh, smoke and fire physics for the explosion. So let's go to the fluid settings and then we'll set this one to flow. And then let's set the uh, flow type to fire plus smoke and then the flow behavior to inflow and the uh, sampling substeps to two which increases the quality of the simulation and then for the flow source we will set it to the particle system so let's uh, select the particle settings that we just added and uh, set the size to four Okay, so uh, let's keyframe this uh, value and then go to frame five and then set the value back to 0.5 and then press I to keyframe once again. And that gives us some variety at the beginning of the simulation. And then set the initial velocity to uh, 0.5. Okay, so now we have the inflow and before we continue, let's uh, save the project. So go to File, Save As, and then just give it a name and save it wherever you want on the computer, and then press Enter to save. And then go to Add, Mesh, and Add a Cube, and then press S to scale up the cube. And this will be the simulation border. So uh, Fluid, and set the type to Domain. And then next we need to go down to the fire settings. And we're going to keyframe a value called reaction speed. And by increasing the reaction speed value, we increase the uh, scale of the uh, flames. So let's uh, press I to keyframe the uh, default value. And then go to frame 13. And then I will decrease the value at the end. So uh, let's set it to 0.1 and then I to keyframe. And once again, we keyframe to give the explosion some variety over time. Okay, and then for the flame smoke, we're going to add a higher value. We'll set it to the maximum value of eight to add more smoke. And then uh, I'm also going to increase the temperature, both the maximum and the minimum, which means more flames in the explosion. 
So let's set it to 10 for the maximum and then 5 for the minimum. Okay, and next we need to uh, increase the length of the simulation. You can keep it at 50 if you want to, but I like to have some smoke at the end as well. Okay, and then let's go back to the top. And before we start the bake, let's uh, save one more time. Let's go to File, Save As, and then click on the plus sign, and then Save. And then click Bake Data, and then press Escape to pause once you hit around 30%. And obviously edited out the uh, baking process. As you can see, we have the explosion. So now that we have the beginning of the simulation, we can add some lighting. Let's just save first. And then once we have everything set up, we can bake the final simulation at a high resolution. So uh, let's select the light source and then change it into a sun, set the strength to around three and then press R to rotate. And uh, R to rotate once again. And then we can go into the render settings and change to cycles. You can also set the device to GPU if you want to. And I'll set the number of samples to around 50, which uh, should be enough. And then if you want to, you can also change it to the GPU. But because I'm recording, I need to use the CPU. Because uh, using the GPU can slow down the recording. Okay, and then let's go to the shader editor. And add the uh, nodes that we need for the fire and smoke. So uh, press X to delete this node. And then go to add, and then search, and then search for principled volume. And then inside the uh, principled volume node, we can change the uh, density of the smoke. So let's set the density of the smoke to five, which increases the uh, thickness of the smoke. And then press shift A, and let's add an uh, add shader node, which we will use to connect the principal volume node and the emission node with the flames that we will add next. And then press shift A, and add an emission node, which will emit the uh, flames. And then press Shift A once again, and add a uh, math node. And we'll set the math node to multiply. And then we'll need one more node for the flames. So press Shift A and search for attributes. And then inside the attribute node, you need to type in flame, which is very important to get the actual flame from the attribute node. And then connect factor to value. And let's set the multiplication value to 20. And then connect value to strength. And then we can connect emission to shader. And then let's make it orange which is the uh, color of the uh, flame. And then we can go into render view. And as you can see, we have both the fire and the smoke. We can also make the background completely black. And I think this looks nice. So uh, let's go back to solid view. And before we continue, let's uh, save the uh, project. So uh, let's go to file. Save as, and uh, click on the plus sign, and then save, in case something crashes. Okay. And uh, the next step of the tutorial is to set up the camera. So press numpad 0 to uh, look through the camera. And then select the camera, go into the camera settings, and let's set the end value to 10,000, so that the range of the camera increases. And uh, then press N and go to view, and then lock camera to view. 
and then we can uh, move a little bit backwards and make sure the whole explosion is within the frame of the camera. This is what it looks like in rendered view and we can also hide the overlay so that we can see the uh, domain. Okay, so I think this looks nice. Okay, so now that we have everything set up, we can uh, go into the material for the domain once again, which uh, controls the uh, look of the fire and the smoke. And you can change the uh, emission value. You can also change the color of the smoke. So you can make it darker or give it a different color. You can also change the density which is the thickness of the smoke. You set it to one, there's almost uh, no smoke. I think I will leave it at five. And then let's go back to solid view. Okay, so let's go into the render settings and I'm going to use the GPU for the final render. And then we can set the number of samples to 100, which uh, should be more than enough. And then I'll set the tile size to 512 because I'm using the GPU. If you're only using the CPU, you can just leave them at 64. And then I'll set the percentage for the resolution to 200. If you want to keep it at 1080p, just leave it at 100%. And then I'll set the end frame to 200 because that's the length of the simulation. The frame rate to 30. And then select a uh, folder on your computer for the uh, final animation output. You can create a folder wherever you want on the uh, computer. Give the folder a name, select the folder, and then give the animation a name. Just going to call it toot, and then press enter. And I'm going to set the compression to uh, 80%, which I think is uh, enough and the file format will be PNGs, and then you can put them together at the end. And then save as, click on plus sign, and then save. And then it's time and, uh, to do the final bake. So uh, let's go into the physics settings, and then free the previous bake, and then you can add a higher resolution. You can add as much as you want to, I think for a normal computer, you should probably leave it at 200, but I have a pretty powerful GPU and so on, so I'm going to set it to 400. And after hours of baking, I have the simulation. I'm just going to make sure to save before I continue in case something crashes. And the whole simulation is done. So let's take a look in rendered view. Rendered view, and uh, then I'm going to select the light, turn on the overlay, and then I'm going to rotate it on the set axis. So press R, then set to rotate it on the set axis. And at this point, I think everything looks okay. So uh, let's just take a look at uh, some of the frames. And this is the time to do the final adjustments because we're going to start the render very soon. So I like the colors. So let's go back to uh, solid view. And then I'm going to do a uh, test render. So to render a single image, just uh, go to render and then render image. And six minutes later, I have the render. So uh, now it's time to render the whole animation. So just go to uh, File, Save As, and save one final time in case something crashes. And then go to Render, and then Render Animation. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and more tutorials coming soon.